he doesn't have to be showy because he's not trying to be a showman. He's actually trying to connect instead. Hey, this is Lady Tina, and here I give you tools to talk with your authentic charisma so you can be socially unbreakable. And today we're talking about Simon Sinek. And if you don't already know him, he is the author of five different beautiful, wonderful books, mainly on leadership itself. You may have heard Find Your Why. He also did a TED Talk on it with over 10 million views and Leaders Eat Last. Let's see one of his most recent speeches and then we'll do a breakdown. You'll see his body language being expanded when he walks in, but at the same time, he slouches a little bit to show his humbleness to show that he is with the audience and not above the audience. You'll see his very wide arms. You see the space between his body and his arms here. I did a whole entire video on walking into a room, in this case, walking onto stage. So I'll link that below for afterwards. But the way he walks in, he walks shoulder width apart. What I mean by shoulder width apart is that his hips and ankles align when he walks in. A lot of times bodybuilders will walk like this, almost like an orangutan, but not in an offensive way, but it's to show their dominance. It's to show their alpha nature. As opposed to a woman, oftentimes they cross their legs like a supermodel. They'll cross their legs mainly to sway their hips and that's a sexual signal. But in this case, Simon is expanding his body language, including his arm. I talk about arm space a lot between the arm and the body. It is expanded. It's very flowy. It's very out. At the same time, at the same time, he's slouching a little bit and he comes across very humble because he does... He does this little bit of, oh, hey, what's going on? Which is very Japanese thing to do. A lot of Japanese people, whether they are dominant or submissive, they tend to slouch because it's to show humbleness. And that's exactly what he's doing. And by the way, that's just him walking in. <laughs> so, so there's that. I just wanted to show you really quickly Simon in the past and how he would use traditional speaker on stage technique, which a part of it is traveling across the stage and using gestures to captivate the audience. A lot of speakers like to travel across the stage to move the story along. So especially when you're going from one transition to another, you want to move across the stage and then planting yourself at a specific spot to make a specific point or emphasize a specific point. Now, what if you were walking down the street and some stranger just says, hey, you gotta go to this restaurant. You'd be like, crack pot, right? You're going to ignore them. This is what trust does. This is why we don't research everything. We don't need access to all information. He uses the stage space very well, which is what you technically should do is go over here, go over there where it matters, where there's context to it. He's telling a story in which it makes sense. And he really does expand his arms over here, over there, and does facial expressions, hand gestures, and he does the whole nine yards. Yeah, so this one, I want to point out that he's actually literally standing in the same exact spot for 50 minutes straight, which technically is a onstage speaker no-no. But what Simon does instead and how I, in my opinion, he's become more a sophisticated speaker because only advanced level people can do this. He rapidly goes from left to right really engaging in somebody and somebody. Usually you do this by walking, you wanna walk across the stage, you wanna use the space. This is how you know as a speaker, you're talking to a general audience is when you do a scan, a scan. But what Simon does is not a scan, he dots. And what I mean by dots is that he goes here, I'm talking to somebody here, I'm talking to somebody here, I'm talking to somebody. And it's very dot, dot, dot versus a person who scans, a speaker who scans the audience or a presenter who scans the audience, they just scan, blah, 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 blah. And you're not really connecting when you scan. So what you wanna do as a speaker or presenter, you want to do dots. With dotting, even if the speaker doesn't end up dotting you in the audience, you feel like they're still talking to you because you see the connection happens. In human psychology, when you see two people connect on a deeper level, you almost feel like you're experiencing the same experience as well. It's something that's crazy, it's a phenomenon that happens, but 
But when two people have that oxytocin and you see that happening, you experience the same amount of oxytocin, the bonding chemical that happens. So you feel like you're bonding and experiencing the same thing that those two humans are experiencing. It's uh, when you when you see it happening simply. That's why we watch movies. That's why we watch TV shows. That's why we watch people on screens. It's because we feel that same feeling, even if it's not happening to us. And so by dotting, you're actually giving the whole entire audience the experience of connection, even if you as a speaker never end up looking at them in the eyes, because now you're letting them experience through another person of connection. So dotting is always recommended when you're speaking or when you're presenting. Always dot, never scan. He doesn't have to be showy because he's not trying to be a showman. He's actually trying to connect instead. Another thing Simon does is he does this head tilt. And you'll see this a lot in his original TED talk as well. So let me go there really fast. You see this is his head tilt. He's always slightly doing this. Look, look at his head tilt. The, po the point of the head tilt, it makes you want to do a head tilt as well. What's genius about this is that when you build rapport with somebody, you naturally mirror them. I did a whole entire video of matching and mirroring, so I'll link that below. We do a head tilt oftentimes when we listen to somebody intently. We really am curious about what they have to say. And so you naturally do this head tilt. And throughout Simon's talk, he tends to do this head tilt. What's great about it is if he built rapport, especially in the beginning of his speech and Throughout his speech, he does a slight head tilt, nothing too noticeable, but he does a slight head tilt. And what that does is that the audience who already built rapport with him, they tend to match and mirror him. They tend to mirror his body language. So what does the audience do? They do a slight head tilt. And there's a biofeedback that happens that if I'm doing a head tilt, it's because I'm curious to know what they're saying. It's because I'm intently listening. I really want to know what he's saying. What What is he about? What's going on? So when the audience mirrors and matches Simon, they are actually more engaged in his contents than they would have otherwise if Simon didn't do a head tilt. Now, granted, Simon had to have built rapport in the beginning in order for the audience to start matching Simon. That being said, once that rapport is built in the beginning and he does a head tilt throughout his whole entire speaking, which he does oftentimes, magic and beauty. He doesn't have to do too much other than that. Even with the fact that in this TED talk, he has a microphone in his hand and a pen in the other hand. So he's very limited because he actually has things that he needs to manage in his hand. But yet that head tilts alone will force people to listen in to what Simon has to say. So that is a little bit of a tidbit on the head tilt. Remember, First impressions, first impressions is how people judge you throughout the rest of the time. So how you walk on stage or how you walk into a room in a presentation is so freaking key. And I suggest you watch my video on first impression body language down below in the description because that's gonna set the tone throughout the whole entire presentation. So how he walks on stage is very confident yet it is connecting to the audience. It's very humble at the same time, which is, it's not an easy thing to do. Simon is a master at that. I suspect that it's something he naturally does at this point. Simon Sinek, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. So that was a quick breakdown on Simon and him being on stage. I hope it was helpful to you. And if you love this body language series, I'm going to do more of these breakdown. Comment below if you want me to break down a specific person that you may want me to take a look at or just specific kind of people or different scenarios that you want me to break down for you so you can walk in to a specific scenario very confidently and I will see what I can do. I appreciate everybody's comments and of course please hit that like button. It really helps my YouTube algorithm. It really helps this channel grow and I, I really you know, put my heart into it. So if you can give it a like, even if, you know, if you're busy, just, just give it a like, just a like. <laughs> and when, when that like button hits blue, then you know, you've, you've made my day. You made my day. So there you go. I, I hope you have a wonderful day and remember 
raise your vibe. See you soon.